Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, uh, this is a lecture on uh, financial reporting course and today our topic is non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations and uh, this is dealt by IFRS 5. So IFRS 5, uh, first of all before we are going in the detail of the topic, we take the overview of the topics. The overview includes uh, there will be some definition and history and we will be doing the classification, measurement and disclosure of the uh, topic uh, which is non-current assets held for sale. And uh, second part would be our uh, uh, there will include discontinued operations. So two main topics are there, uh, non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. Both topics are similar to one another. So let's see what uh, are the uh, details of these two topics. So first of all, I come to the introduction. Introduction includes uh, uh, what is the word IFRS. The word IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standard. Uh, these standards uh, have been issued by International Accounting Standards Board. Previously, uh, standards were issued such as IAS 1, 2, 3 and so on. But now these standards are being converted from IAS nomenclature to IFRS nomenclature. So this standard IFRS 5 which we are going to study uh, is from IFRS series. This standard was issued on March 2004 and it was applicable from 1st January 2005 from, for the whole year. Whole year is applicable. For example, if we are uh, going to uh, do the financial reporting for the whole year, that could be 1st January 2005 till 31st December 2005. Till now, there are 17 IFRSs been issued and uh, currently we are studying IFRS. First of all, uh, our topic is classification of a non-current current asset held for sale. Before uh, we come to the definition which is being given uh, by uh, IFRS, we see some background of this topic. In the background, at the date, for example, we see at the date of financial statements, we may not have disposed of an asset, but asset is no longer in use. Balance sheet date pay, financial statement ki date pay, हमारे पास हो सकता है कि कोई एक ऐसा asset मौजूद है जो कि हमारे इस्तमाल में नहीं है, which is no longer in use uh, और हमने उसको अभी तक dispose of भी नहीं किया dispose of से मुराद आप समझ रहे होंगे कि शायद हम कह रहे हैं कि इसको sell कर देना dispose of से मुराद ये होता है कि if all the uh, cost of the asset is being used up used up uh, by the accumulated depreciation for example an asset has value of 10 million dollars and its accumulated depreciation is 10 million dollars so its uh, uh, net book value is equal to zero as its net book value is equal to zero so it will be removed from the books of accounts and uh, so we uh, call it as uh, disposed of. Now we come to the second situation or second way. If we sell an asset and uh, we will be removing that asset from our books of accounts and we can say that this asset has been disposed of. Now this is the third situation in which an asset is available in the books of accounts. It has not been disposed of from the books of accounts and it has some net book value as well obviously it has some net book value otherwise it could have been it uh, surely would have been disposed of uh, from our books of accounts so it is an uh, for example it is an empty warehouse and uh, it is a surplus to the requirement of an organization so the organization uh, wants to uh, uh, set it as non-current asset held for sale so IFRS makes easy and uh, it uh, allows a specific treatment for it 
and it states that any non-current asset uh, that is surplus for the requirement that should be classified as held for sale if it's carrying value if it's carrying amount will be recovered principally through a sale transaction and rather than uh, through continuing use it means that uh, this asset will not be used in a usual manner for example uh, this is an empty warehouse and uh, it has uh, eight years life remaining so we are not uh, going we are not planning to use it uh, uh, like other assets we are going to sell it and uh, because the reason is that it is no longer in use ye hamare kisi behtar istemal mein nahi hai to jab hum is tarah se ek organization decide kar le to usko is tarah se classify kar diya jata hai ki this is a non current asset uh, it is held for sale so this is uh, some introduction and uh, uh, this was some background uh, set for our next topic which is what are the criteria for a non current asset to be treated as a uh, as held for sale <clears throat> so keeping in view that background now we come to the criteria you may say these are four conditions if all of these four conditions are met then uh, ifrs 5 says that uh, a specific non current asset will be considered will be decided will be classified as a non current asset held for sale first condition for first criteria for this to be the case the asset must be available for immediate sale in its present condition uh, the sale must be highly probable in these two conditions you see that uh, the organization must have a decision and intention to sell it immediately secondly uh, its sale must be highly probable it means there must be a market uh, where this asset could be sold out available market should be there there should be some reasonable price has been set uh, obviously when there is a pro appropriate market there is proper market then there will be reasonable price should be available and finally the sale is expected to complete within one year from the date of classification all four conditions refer to a situation in which an asset is going to be sold within one year uh, under normal circumstances so <clears throat> continuing with our previous slide uh, we are explaining a bit more uh, secondly there are four criteria and all four criteria must be met as i have already mentioned if any one is not uh, met the asset will not be classified as a non current asset held for sale under ifrs 5 what could be the uh, example uh, for example there is a, an asset and uh, there are no major repairs are required on a building before it could be put on sale so if we are explaining in this way that uh, in our previous example uh, there should not be a major repair required so management must be committed to sell the asset uh, it shows that uh, their intention is there and there must be an active program to locate a buyer these are points are, are explaining the previous four conditions so we come to the next slide now uh, before uh, uh, this topic we start the measurement of a non current asset we should have some important definitions in mind first of all these uh, word will be used during the measurement of a non current asset held for sale so we should be knowing what are the specific meaning and the explanations of these uh, specific terms first of all is the carrying amount the amount at which the uh, an asset is recognized in the balance sheet you all know that uh, that the carrying amount uh, is the amount of an asset which is available in the balance sheet you also know it uh, from the name of the net book value net book value uh, is the value at which uh, an asset is uh, reported at the balance sheet date or any other date 
uh, at the cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses so carrying amount uh, is the most important uh, concept uh, definition now we come to the next definition uh, that is fair value fair value is a price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date so fair value uh, is a concept in which uh, we see that uh, the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid jahan do parties azadi ke sath ek uh, proper market ke andar jo hai ek uh, asset ko khareedne aur bechne ka kaam kar sakte hain और वो जो प्राइस जिसके ऊपर वो आएंगे जिस प्राइस के ऊपर वो एक दूसरे से जो है वो मुतफिक हो जाएंगे दैट इज कॉल्ड फेयर वैल्यू ऑफ दैट एसेट आफ्टर दिस टू डेफिनेशन थर्ड वन यू मे कॉल इट एज अ डेफिनेशन और अ कांसेप्ट इज कॉस्ट टू सेल सो इफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज गोइंग टू सेल एन एसेट देयर वुड बी सम minor cost involved uh, this cost uh, cost directly attributable to the disposal of an asset these are or disposal group disposal i am uh, i will be explaining the concept of disposal group later so i repeat again cost directly attributable to the disposal of an asset excluding finance cost and income tax expense you will be thinking what could be cost directly attributable to the disposal of an asset take an example of a machine which is uh, uh, available at uh, a factory and now this organization decides to sell and now this machine would have to be removed from its place removing that uh, uh, machine from its place dismantling this machine from its place uh, will cause some cost to a organization so this could be a minor cost uh, and now i come to the term of the disposal group this is very important term a disposal group is a group of assets which are to be disposed of in a single transaction uh, first of all previously we were discussing that uh, there is a non current asset we were talking about one uh, non current asset but if we are uh, taking or we are selling a group of assets in this way so it will become a disposal group agar ek asset hoga to usko hum non current asset ek kahenge aur agar wo miljul ke ek group of asset hoga to usko hum disposal group keh denge aur normally aisa ho sakta hai kyunki ek organization hai wo ek specific assets ko sell karna chahti hai for example there is a building and there are two or three workstations in it so it will uh, sell all these assets in that building it will not be selling one asset like say uh, the organization is uh, selling the building but it is not selling the uh, machines so both cases could be there but uh, more, sometimes it happens that the organization is going to uh, go on the disposal group so after the definitions we come to the most important uh, part of this uh, uh, lecture which is the measurement of non current assets held for sale we have uh, learned the definitions of carrying value fair value and cost to sell and these three definitions will be used here in the measurement of non current assets held for sale so come to the point a non current asset or a disposal group which is held for sale should be measured at the lower of its carrying amount when it was initially classified as held for sale and and its fair value less cost to sell so we will compare two values carrying amount of that asset and fair value of that asset and we will consider the value of that non current asset current assets held for sale uh, its value which one is lower value so i repeat again we will take two values one is carrying amount 
the second one is fair value uh, and uh, compare these two values and whichever is lower whichever is lesser will be considered as the value of that non current asset held for sale according to IFRS 5 uh, there is uh, one point, important point uh, in a uh, box below that uh, when we have decided that this asset, we have classified that, we have recognized that a specific asset is a non-current asset held for sale, then depreciation should not be charged with regard to non-current asset uh, which is considered uh, held for sale because we are going to sell it down. We are. We have already decided that we are not using it as a continuing use. So why we uh, should be charging depreciation? जब हम उसको as a continuing use use ही नहीं कर रहे हैं, तो फिर हम उसकी depreciation तो charge नहीं कर सकते. So uh, this is uh, what we have studied: uh, the measurement of non-current assets held for sale. Now I come to the uh, presentation of non-current assets held for sale. Uh, obviously presentation means that uh, how we will be presenting it in our financial statements. Financial statements are uh, very specific financial statement would be very relevant financial statement would be the statement of financial position uh, the other name of which is balance sheet. So non-current asset which is held for sale uh, and the assets of a disposal group held for sale should be presented separately from the other assets in the statement of financial position. Unko alayda sa hi show karna padega. Uh, obviously unko on the face of balance sheet hi show karenge lekin unko alayda sa show karenge. Second point is the liabilities of a disposal group should be presented separately from other liabilities. Uh, there are associated liabilities with the disposal group assets as well. How that can be? Take an example. For example, uh, an organization has leased a car and it is an asset of uh, that organization. And now, due to some reason, the organization considers, classifies, decides that this car is no longer in use. So, it should be classified as uh, non current asset held for sale but uh, the car was uh, leased and uh, the payable installments liabilities uh, or, and the financial charges payable to the bank are payable by the organization so this uh, non current asset held for sale has some associated liability with it in this way you can consider there might be some uh, liabilities associated and these should also be presented separately from other liabilities and it should be shown clearly final point that is uh, need to be considered that you say taking the same example of the car the car uh, cost is 2 million rupees on the asset side and its associated liability is like uh, 5 uh, lakh rupees 500,000 rupees. So on the liability side, both are distinctly presented separately from the other assets and other liabilities. You cannot offset them. Like you cannot say that uh, 2 million rupees on asset side and uh, uh, 500,000 rupees on liability side. So we um, may offset them. No, it is not possible. So both will be presented at its place and uh, it should be uh, better uh, I should say reporting now we come to the next point after the financial statements you all know statement of comprehensive income statement of financial position cash flow statement a statement of owners equity what comes these were the four financial statements I repeat again statement of comprehensive income and then uh, statement of owner's equity, statement of financial position and cash flow statement. Four financial statements are reported in the annual report and then come the notes to the financial statements. 
the notes uh, elaborate the different values written in the financial statements uh, like balance sheet there is uh, non current assets value is written and a specific point or note a number is given to that uh, asset non current assets and its details its description is given in the notes to the accounts so the notes to the financial statement should provide further information with regard to non current assets held for sale including a description of the asset what is the kind of that asset what is the age of that asset what is the cost of that asset when it was purchased and uh, what is the accumulated depreciation till now and all other details which have we have discussed in the previous slides uh, you can uh, see those mentioned in the notes to the accounts and there could be an explanation of the circumstances and the amount of any impairment losses could also be there now to better understand uh, uh, the topic we need to illustrate we need to have a, an example of the presentation and disclosure so there will be some calculation will be required as well so we suppose uh, an organization purchases a machine for $20,000 on 1st January 2018. Its expected useful life is 10 years with no residual value and the company is using straight line method for the depreciation. Due to some circumstances after the passage of two years on December 31, 2019, the company decides to sell that asset and uh, decides to consider it as held for sale. Uh, its current market value is available, its proper current market value is available, current market is available, there are buyers are available, and the company is confident to find a buyer quickly. So, and there is some dismantling cost as well, uh, it is $500, I guess. So this is raw information and uh, we have to decide whether this organization is correct in deciding or recognizing it as an asset held for sale or not. And we will be giving some calculation for the measurement and that measurement would be uh, shown in the financial statements. So we are going to do a practical work, an example, okay. So, I have uh, come up with the solution for you people. As you remember, we have uh, studied in the previous slide, we need a carrying value and we need a fair value. We will be comparing these two values and whichever would be lesser would be considered as the value of that uh, not current assets held for sale and we will be uh, accordingly uh, adjusting the value of the asset in our statement of financial position uh, on the reporting date and whatsoever date uh, it comes up. So current carrying value or in simple ways you call it as net book value is the assets cost historical cost at which the asset was purchased is uh, you know $20,000 and we have used it uh, for two years. It means two years uh, depreciation would be deducted from this cost. So we are doing uh, some smart calculation 8 over 10 because two years have gone, eight years are left. So eight years carrying value is left, net book value of the eight years is left. So 8 over 10 into 20,000 gives us $16,000 is the current carrying value or net book value of that asset. So second thing which is fair value, less cost to sell. I am uh, uh, frequently using the word fair value but remember it uh, uh, always uh, adds, I mean it subtracts the cost to sell as well. So it is understood that when I say the word fair value, it should deduct the cost to sell as well. So in the previous data, uh, we found that there is a fair market value is available, which is $15,000 and cost for dismantling that asset is $500. So getting ready uh, 
the asset to be sold out is the fair value equal to 14,500 means that the organization will receive $15,000 for that asset but uh, practically speaking originally speaking uh, the organization has to deduct that $500 from that value so it is $14,500 actually is a fair value less cost to sell available to the organization now we got uh, two values available 16,000 and 14,500 available now we compare that which, whichever is uh, lower Kaunsi value is mein se kam hai So Humne Isko Sani ke saath dekh liya Ke Fair value less cost to sell is Lesser than that of carrying value So we will consider That the value of That asset Is $14,500 So The machine qualifies As an asset Held for sale Bilkul Sab se pehle We will Recognize it Classify it as because it uh, follows it uh, comes up uh, to all the conditions for the assets to be held for sale at December 31 2019 and uh, so now we are going to do its valuation so it should be valued at lower of carrying value or fair value that comes up to be $14,500 now next step is very interesting for the accountants the, there is some work for the accountants so asset is appearing at its uh, book value or carrying value at $16,000 in the books of accounts and we have now decided its value to be $14,500 so what would be our next task the accountants uh, will have to be have to pass an entry for the impairment loss the impairment will be charged against profit uh, for the year in the statement of profit or loss or statement of comprehensive income we call and uh, as you all know uh, on the face of the financial statements everyone can see the values of the non-current assets current assets but at every uh, value of the assets at the backup of every value there are some uh, journal entries you all know debit and credit uh, principles are there so we will have to pass an uh, entry journal entry for this adjustment so a journal general journal entry would be passed and uh, it would be uh, you could impairment loss could be debited and the asset would be credited and uh, in uh, alternatively you could pass profit or loss count uh, could be debited and the asset would be credited asset is credited because the value of the asset is decreased so we have credited the asset and uh, there is clear cut impairment loss is there so uh, it is uh, debited it is a loss it is an expense so all the losses and expenses are debited and these are charged to the profit and loss account okay uh, finally having done this all it is uh, noted that this machine is no longer depreciated so uh, it would be uh, wrong to depreciate this asset further because we have decided not to use it as uh, an asset for continuing operations or continuing use okay guys we come up to we have done uh, so far the definitions and the classification the measurement and the uh, presentation on the financial statements that is called uh, the disclosure now we discuss a very small topic that is the scope of the measurement requirements of IFRS 5. So it is clear cut that uh, all the non-current assets do not apply, uh, do not uh, uh, apply to uh, the all the assets. This uh, standard does not apply to all the assets. It only applies to non-current assets. Uh, which meet the criteria and uh, specifically specifically do not apply at all to certain assets for example investment properties whether these are to be sold individually or as part of the disposal group isme khas baat samajhne ki hai ki ek organization kehti hai ki theek hai ye hamara disposal group hai uh, held for sale according to IFRS 5 iske andar chale hum ek investment ki 
रुपया नजर से हमने एक प्रॉपर्टी खरीदी हुई थी इन्वेस्टमेंट हमने की हुई थी इन्वेस्टमेंट वाले एसेट को भी चले इस जो है वो डिस्पोजल ग्रुप में डाल देते हैं तो क्यों ना इस डिस्पोजल ग्रुप के अंदर ही इसी ट्रीटमेंट के अंदर हम इसको यूज कर लेंगे इसकी व्हाट कुड बी द अदर इंप्लीकेशंस ऑफ डूइंग दिस रॉन्ग ट्रीटमेंट इट इज अ सेपरेट टॉपिक एंड कुड बी डिस्कस्ड इन अनदर लेक्चर बट इट इज नॉट अलाउड अंडर आई एफ आर एस फाइव सो बिकॉज इन रेलिवेंट थिंग्स इट शुड बी अवॉइडेड an asset which is beyond the scope of the measurement requirements of IFRS 5 should continue to be measured in accordance with the applicable standard to jo routine mein jo standard hoga jo uske upar applicable hoga usi ke upar isko karna padega <coughs> so now i come to uh, the accounting for impairment losses ye cheez aap thodi der pehle hum ab isko halka sa discuss kar chuke hain ab hum aate hain iski कुछ मजीद डिटेल की तरफ हेर इज टर्म डिटेल फॉर द अकाउंटिंग फॉर इम्पेयरमेंट लॉसेस सो वी कम टू द पॉइंट वन बाय वन वेन एन एसेट और डिस्पोजल ग्रुप इज इनिशियली क्लासीफाइड एज हेड फॉर सेल कंसनट्रेट ऑन द वर्ड इनिशियली सो एन इम्पेयरमेंट लॉस इज रिकोगनाइज इफ फेयर वैल्यू लेस कॉस्ट टू सेल इज लोअर देन कैरिंग वैल्यू I will repeat. Impairment loss is recognized if fair value is lower than the carrying amount. Obviously, uh, the company will be uh, having some loss in this situation. So uh, I have uh, uh, discussed this earlier. I will repeat it again that uh, there will profit and loss count will be debited and uh, specific asset will be credited. Secondly. that was initially classified now if further impairment loss is recognized if there is a decrease in fair value less cost to sell this could be on a balance sheet date and any other date uh, uh, at which the company is recognizing it third situation if there is loss could be incurred there could be gain as well again is recognized if there is an increase in fair value less cost to sell obviously this situation is opposite to that of the first two situation first two entries journal entries so the journal entry will also be reversed in this case the uh, assets will be the asset would be itself will be debited and the profit and loss account would be credited and uh, finally there is a point uh, to consider if gains which exceed the cumulative impairment losses i stop here uh from time to time there are more than 1 2 3 their uh, assets which have some impairment losses and there is a cumulative impairment loss account is there and the company adds them up uh, that itne ji hain hamare impairment losses ho chuke hain to agar ab ek aise situation aa jati hai ke jahan pe kuch gains bhi shuru ho jate hain to un gains ko is had tak जो है रिकॉग्नाइज किया जाएगा कि इम्पेयरमेंट लॉसेस की वैल्यू के बराबर ये चला जाए अगर ये गेंस इम्पेयरमेंट लॉसेस से बढ़ते हैं तो फिर इसको रिकॉग्नाइज नहीं किया जाएगा फॉर एग्जांपल इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज इज दैल्यू ऑफ द इम्पेयरमेंट लॉसेस एंड इम्पेयरमेंट इम्पेयरमेंट लॉसेस एंड वी गेट सम गेन इन दिस रिगार्ड तो वो जो गेन है वो 50,000 से अगर ज्यादा हो गया तो हम 50,000 तक इम्पेयरमेंट लॉसेस को जो है वो ले सकते हैं और इससे ज्यादा जो हम हैं गेन्स को कंसीडर नहीं कर सकते सो नाउ कंटिन्यूइंग विद द प्रीवियस टॉपिक अकाउंटिंग फॉर इम्पेयरमेंट लॉसेस फॉर आर डिस्पोजल ग्रुप impairment losses and any subsequent gains are generally allocated between the non current assets in the group in order set out in ias 36 so iske liye hum jo hai wo ias 36 ko use karenge ki agar hum unhe usko allocate karna hai non current assets ke darmiyan ye previous topic se hi related hamari baat jo hai wo chal rahi hai to isko ias 36 deal karega kyunki uska ye relevant usse situation jo hai wo जाती है। 
have for sale and uh, before uh, I complete the whole topic that is discontinued operations so I will tell you that in the next lecture we will do the exercises and problems which will be comprehensive and nature which is in which non-cut assets held for sale and discontinued operations will collectively see that they will be treated in financial statements in the advanced level so we will do कंप्लीट कर लें सो डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशंस जो नेचर तकरीबन नॉन कंडेंसर हेल्ड फॉर सेल की है उससे मिलती जुलती नेचर डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशंस की है क्योंकि एक हम एक टॉपिक पढ़े हैं इंसान की एक नेचर होती है कि अगर एक चीज पहले से पड़ी हुई है तो उससे मिलती जुलती चीज उसकी एग्जांपल अगर दे दी जाए तो वो समझने में आसानी होती है तो आप जरा गौर करें तो एसेट्स हेल्ड फॉर सेल की नेचर भी तकरीबन यही होती है कि द एसेट्स आर नो लॉन्गर इन यूज द कंपनी डज नॉट वांट टू यूज देम ड्यू टू वन रीजन और द अदर तो कंपनी उसको हेल्ड फॉर सेल पे लगा देती है तो अगर यही उससे अगली स्टेज बनती है कि वो एक एसेट होता है तो उसको हमने कह दिया नॉन कंट्रेड एसेट हेल्ड फॉर सेल अगर वो ग्रुप ऑफ एसेट्स हो गए तो हमने उसको कह दिया डिस्पोजल ग्रुप तो ये सब चीजें अगर मिलके एक डिस्पोजल ग्रुप एक कंपनी का एक डिवीजन बन जाए एक ओवरऑल कंपनी का एक हिस्सा हो तो उसको अगर कंपनी डिसकंटिन्यू करना चाहे तो ये भी आई एफ फाइव के ही अंडर आता है तो ये आपस में एक दूसरे से मिलते जुलते टॉपिक हैं तो इसको हम देखते हैं आई एफ फाइव डिफाइंस डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन एज अ कम्पोनेंट ऑफ एन एंटिटी दैट आईर हैज बिन डिस्पोज ऑफ और इस क्लासिफाइड एस हेल्ड फॉर सेल देखा आपने कि इस डेफिनेशन के अंदर ही ये बात आ गई कि दो सिचुएशंस हो सकती हैं कि आइडर वो ऑपरेशन या वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का बिजनेस का हिस्सा पहले ही डिस्पोज़ ऑफ हो चुका है या उसको हेल्ड फॉर सेल कह दिया गया है इसमें एक चीज खास बात ये समझने की है कि जैसे कि अभी थोड़ी देर में आएगा कि इसकी रिपोर्टिंग बड़ी दिलचस्प होती है इसको सेपरेटली किया जाता है कंपनी के स्टेटमेंट ऑफ कंपनी एंड सेविंग इनकम में कंटिन्यूएड ऑपरेशंस एंड डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशंस दो हिस्से लेदा-लेदा करके दिखा दिए जाते हैं और उन दोनों की जो रेवेन्यूज हैं एक्सपेंसेस हैं वो अलग-अलग होते हैं तो द स्टैंडर्ड सेज दैट and that represents a separate major line of business जैसे कि मैंने थोड़ी देर पहले कहा कि ये कोई एक एसेट से बात आगे चली डिस्पोजल ग्रुप पे आई और वो उससे आगे बात जो है और डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशंस पे आ गई यानी कि ये एक ऐसा एक सेटअप होता है which is a major line of business ये उस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का एक हिस्सा होता है तो for example एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है उसकी तीन डिव एक डिवीजन जो है वो डेरी प्रोडक्ट से रिलेटेड है दूसरी डिवीजन जो है फॉर एग्जांपल उसके अंदर वो जो है कुछ फर्टिलाइजर्स बनाते हैं और सोन इस तरह से अब एक फर्ज करें कि कंपनी ये चाह रही है कि वो अपने दो में से एक लाइन ऑफ बिजनेस पे कंसंट्रेट करे लाइक वो फूड एंड डेरीज के अंदर रहना चाह रही है फूड के अंदर ज्यादा डिटेल में जाना चाह रही है और अपनी जो है वो फर्टिलाइजर्स वाली डिवीजन को खत्म करना चाहती है तो वो उसको डिसकंटिन्यू कर सकती है जिस साल में वो इसको डिसकंटिन्यू करेगी और कंपनी उसको क्लासिफाई करेगी उसको रिकॉग्नाइज करेगी तो उस साल से वो उसका जो फर्टिलाइजर्स ग्रुप होगा मेजर लाइन ऑफ बिजनेस होगा फर्टिलाइजर बिजनेस होगा वो डिसकंटिन्यू ऑपरेशन के तहत आ जाएगा so uh, that could be uh, a part of a single coordinated plan to dispose of separate major lines of business pehle humne kaha ki ek separate major line of business ho sakta hai fir hum isi baat ko detail mein le gaye ki ho sakta hai ki ye company ka ek mansoobe ka hissa hai ek plan ka hissa hai ki wo company apne ek line of business ko jo hai wo dispose of karna chahti hai sell karna chahti hai ye bhi ho sakta hai कि कंपनी जो है एक खास मकसद के तहत वो मकसद क्या हो सकता है कि टू अर्न प्रॉफिट 
कंपनी एक सब्सिडरी को एक्वायर करती है और एक्सक्लूसिवली इसी मकसद से उसको एक्वायर करती है कि उसको रीसेल कर दिया जाए सो दीज आर थ्री एक्सप्लेनेटरी पॉइंट्स व्हिच हैव बीन रिटर्न हेयर फॉर द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द अब मेन डेफिनेशन ऑफ द डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन ओके नेक्स्ट इज अ कंपोनेंट ऑफ एन एंटिटी comprises operations and cash flows that can be clearly distinguished from the rest of the entity or organization so this is another uh, classifying recognizing criteria uh, in ifrs 5 for the discontinued operations that uh, as i already mentioned it should be clear cut uh, uh, mentioned that uh, these are the for example i continue with the example of the fertilizer Uh, division fertilizer line of business so it is clear cut uh, known to the organization that uh, these are the fertilizers operations and these are the cash flows of the fertilizer operations and these are the cash flows of uh, their dairy or food business so it should be distinguished otherwise that could not be considered as discontinued operations yani isme ye wazeh hona chahiye ke ye hame revenue aa raha hai Uh, हमें फर्टिलाइजर से ये आ रहा है और ये इसके एक्सपेंसेस हैं ये इसकी फैक्ट्री है और ये सारा कुछ सेपरेटली हम इसको अंडरस्टैंड कर सकते हैं सो so, फाइनली इस एक बॉक्स में एक इंस्ट्रक्शन दी हुई है कि आई एफ आर एस फाइव रिक्वायर्स दैट एंटिटीज शुड प्रेजेंट एंड डिस्क्लोज इंफॉर्मेशन दैट एनेबल्स यूजर्स ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट टू एवेल्यूएट द इफेक्ट ऑफ डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन सबसे अहम बात इसमें यह है कि वाई इंटरनेशनल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड बोर्ड बोदरिंग सो मच फॉर सेपरेटली डिस्क्लोजिंग एंड रिपोर्टिंग द डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन दैट इज द रीजन दैट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स आर पब्लिश्ड फॉर द एक्सटर्नल यूजर्स फॉर द इन्वेस्टर्स एंड फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर्स एंड यूजर्स सो इफ दे नो वट इज एग्जैक्टली the financial position financial health of the organization so they should be in a better position to uh, make their decision in the investment in that specific organization if an organization uh, is going to sell its business the investor will see that uh, it is not flourishing it is not excelling in that uh, business so he can uh imagine what could be implications on of the of that uh, closing down the business on the other parts of the business as well so it's very good uh, initiative on the part of the international accounting standard board that it provides such an opportunity of the reporting that is helpful very much helpful for the investors and general public who are willing to or not willing to invest in a specific organization so we are coming up to the final uh, point uh, of our lecture which is presentation and disclosure of the discontinued operations with regard to the discontinued operation the entity should disclose company ko disclose karna chahiye kya disclose karna hai a single amount that is the most important uh, part of this uh, slide that a single amount should be shown in the statement of comprehensive income ye nahi hai ke janab ye jo humne example jiske upar main bol raha hu for example fertilizer divisions that this is the revenue of the fertilizer division this is the uh, cost of goods sold this is the gross profit then so on no there should be only one single amount in the statement of comprehensive income comprising the total of the post tax profit or loss of discontinued operations agar usme hua hai to uski value ek value likhi jayegi yani revenue less cost of goods sold less operating expenses less tax each and everything deducted one final figure first it will be written income statement or statement of comprehensive income will be starting and there will be the continuing operations obviously uske baad uske जो है लिखने के बाद इनकम को लिखने के बाद एक पोस्ट टैक्स प्रॉफिट और लॉस लिखा जाएगा 
फिर इसी टॉपिक से हमारे रिलेटेड ये है गेन और लॉस ऑन डिस्पोजल ऑफ एसेट्स अब दो सिचुएशंस हो सकती हैं कि जैसे कि हमने स्टैंडर्ड के शुरू में डेफिनेशन में पढ़ा कि ये डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन जो है या तो डिस्पोज ऑफ हो गया अगर तो डिस्पोज ऑफ हो गया तो उसके जो एसेट्स हैं वो उसके डिस्पोजल पे हमें गेन और लॉस भी मिलेगा तो उसका मेंशन करना भी जरूरी है और उसी साल में फर्ज करें कि दैट डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन रिमेंड अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ आवर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर द 6 मंथ्स एंड आफ्टर दोस सिक्स मंथ्स दैट वाज सोल्ड आउट डिस्पोज्ड ऑफ सो द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ दोज ऑपरेशंस द इंप्लिकेशन ऑफ दोज ऑपरेशंस दैट इज रेवेन्यू एंड एक्सपेंसेस will be received by that organization so first point profit uh, post tax profit is very much relevant and in the same case in that same scenario gain or loss on disposal of the same assets could also be there so remember this third point is the post tax gain or loss on the measurement uh, to fair value less cost to sell that is also relevant ya pichle jo hai wo kuch points mein pad chuke hain के इसको भी हमने कंसिडर करना है और इसी तरह से जो है वो हमने गेन और लॉस ऑन डिस्पोजल ऑफ एसेट्स विच कॉन्स्टिट्यूट डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशंस उस गेन और लॉस को भी हमने ये शायद पहले भी इसी स्लाइड में ये पॉइंट डिस्कस हो गया है तो फाइनली विद रिकॉर्ड रिगार्ड टू द डिसकंटिन्यूड ऑपरेशन द एंटिटी शुड डिस्कलोज an analysis of this single amount either in the statement of comprehensive income or in the notes to the financial statements so jaise ki maine kaha ke previous slide mein ke ek single amount aani chahiye to usko jo hai usi comprehensive income mein bhi uska analysis analysis se murad kya hai analysis se murad bahut sare meaning mein analysis aa jata hai ek to aap jante hain ki financial statements analysis hai उसमें भी हम ये लफज एनालिसिस यूज करते हैं एक सिंपली किसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के चीजों के एनालिसिस में भी हम वर्ड यूज करते हैं यहाँ पे रिपोर्टिंग के अंदर ये वर्ड एनालिसिस कुछ जगह पे इस्तेमाल होता है यहाँ पे रिपोर्टिंग के पर्पज से एनालिसिस से मुराद ये है कि फॉर एग्जांपल आप एक्सपेंसिस का एनालिसिस किसी जगह पे करते हैं सो एनालिसिस ऑफ एक्सपेंसिस मीन्स देर इज ए लिस्ट ऑफ एक्सपेंसिस Uh, available to an organization and dividing these expenses into three main categories manufacturing expenses marketing administrative expenses and number third the administrative expenses dividing the all the expenses uh, writing it down item by item in a form of a table is called analysis of expenses so here Uh, if we are going to having the analysis of this single amount so it means what are its components what are the components of this single amount is called the analysis of this single amount so it could be uh, i think it is better to have it in the notes to the financial statements isko behtar yahi hai ki financial statements ke notes mein likha jaye uski puri detail wahan pe aa jayegi to iska matlab standard ka maqsad ye hai ki wo aapko mana nahi kar raha hai इट कुड बी आईदर ऑन द फेस ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव इनकम और इन द नोट टू द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट ये दोनों जगह आ सकता है तो बाकी अप्रोप्रिएट होने का फैसला वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन उसको खुद कर लेगी कि कौन सा बेहतर है तो यहाँ पे जो है अलहमद ला हम इसको कम्प्लीट करते हैं तो इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर यूर स्टूडेंट्स एंड प्रॉब्लम विद स्पेसिफिक रिलेशन टू आवर टॉपिक आई एफ आर एस फाइव उसके अंदर हम देखेंगे एक कॉम्प्रीहेंसिवली के कैसे uh, एक ही सिचुएशन के अंदर एसेट्स नॉन कंटेस्टेड हेल्ड फॉर सेल ट्रीट किए जाते हैं और उसी सिचुएशन के अंदर अगर कोई डिसकंटिन्यूइंग का सिचुएशन आती है तो वो हमारी स्टेटमेंट ऑफ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव इनकम कैसे उसमें बनाई जाएगी और बैलेंस शीट जो है या स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल रिलेशन कैसे इसमें बनाई जाएगी सो so, इनशाला वी विल मीट इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर सो Till then, Allah Hafiz.